U.S. Airways Flight 1549 crashed in the Hudson River. It was a defining moment for a lot of things, including Twitter. This iconic photo of the miracle on the Hudson crash was tweeted out by a passenger on a nearby ferry, helping to make the scene a direct news source. As Joe Waldman tells us, five years later, Twitter, Facebook, and other social media sites continue to change the way we get the news, Joel. Yep, Darian Steve, his name is Giannis Crooms, and he tweeted out this photo five years ago to the day. He retweeted this today, saying the five-year anniversary of the miracle on the Hudson. Congrats. Now, obviously, it is a day that changed the captain's lives, the passengers' lives, but incredibly, it also changed our lives in a different sort of way. Do you have any idea how many years ago the miracle on the Hudson was when the plane landed on the Hudson? A year ago. <laughs> Today. It was within three, four years. Believe it or not, it's been five years since a man named Giannis Crooms tweeted out this photo. What? No. Yes, it's true. Five years. And some say that one tweet single-handedly changed the way we gather and deliver our news. That was the pivot point. Chris Desi, the CEO of Silverback Social, says the day Captain Sully Sullenberger heroically landed that U.S. Airways jet safely in the Hudson is also the same day any one of us could become an instant journalist. People then realized this was a news source of citizen journalists, people on the ground documenting what was happening in real time. With nearly all of us armed with a powerful computer, otherwise known as our cell phones, and social media sites everywhere we turn, from Facebook to Twitter, Instagram and YouTube, to Yahoo and everything in between, some say the only constant about our news now is that it won't stay the same for very long. It's hard to keep up with it. It's hard to predict what's happening next. I think what you can depend on and is that this rapid rate of change will continue. CUNY grad school photojournalism professor John Smock tells us besides expecting that constant change in how we get and receive our news, the only other thing we can really count on is knowing we're going to reach many more people than ever before. Geographical boundaries, you know, the boundaries of your broadcast and the distribution of your paper, they don't matter anymore in this environment. Um, so it's a much bigger audience. And a bigger audience it sure is and can, will continue to be. Now, Facebook, obviously, this is a huge talk. source for how people get news. Today, they announced they're going to launch something called Paper. And yes, it will be exactly that. It's going to be a customized newspaper according to the sorts of things that you're actually looking at on Facebook. So obviously, Stephen Darry, we're looking at a brave new world mm. when it comes to journalism. Ever changing. Yeah. Thank you, Joel.